There we go. All right. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your career? Sure. So my name is Cliff Simon, probably better known to most people as Baal of uh, Stargate SG-1. Big, bad, I don't know, lovable Baal. Um, I grew up in South Africa, lived there, you know, most of my life. Um, served in the military in the Air Force in South Africa after I would lived in London for three years where I swam for the British international team. I was an athlete and swimming was my thing. Uh, that's what I used to do six and a half hours a day, every single day of my life. But eventually I couldn't take it anymore and I got out of the pool and uh, I qualified for the Los Angeles Olympics in 84 and I had scholarships to the United States, but I turned it all down to go back to South Africa and serve in the military. Uh, I was a young guy. I was just looking for excitement and to get away from my parents, uh, all that kind of thing. And I served in the military. You know, it was good. I had no regrets about it. Uh, it was a good. Uh, I grew up very quickly, and it taught me a lot of good life lessons, which I still use to this day. And then I travelled a little bit, and um, I eventually fell, really fell into the dance world. Uh, I trained as a gymnast as well when I was a kid, and through people I met, I just all of a sudden one day found myself in this cabaret show uh, at a hotel on the coast in South Africa. And all I was doing was acrobatics. I was, you know, somersaults, flick flecks around the floor. And I kind of loved the lifestyle. I loved the nighttime lifestyle and being able to lie on the beach all day and work at night. And I actually went to dance class and I learned and eventually became a professional dancer and made a living out of it for over 12 years, uh, culminating at the Moulin Rouge in Paris as a principal dancer there for one year. Uh, started off as a chorus dancer, uh, then I would understudy the principal, and then I got the principal position because he left and they asked me to replace him for a while. I stayed there for a year, it was the most amazing year of my life, living in Paris, working with the most amazing people at the Moulin Rouge, and uh, Paris was such an amazing place. It's still one of the best years of my life. And I decided after a year I needed to move on. You know, my ultimate goal was I, I wanted to get to the United States. At this stage, I'd started thinking about acting. Um, it was not a big dream of mine my whole life, but I knew I kind of wanted to get out of South Africa. South Africa had a very small industry and I was just sick and tired of violence and whatever, was, whatever else is going on in South Africa. You know, it's my home country. I was born there. I love the country itself, the animals and the wildlife. But I just couldn't live there anymore. And I got married and moved to the States in 2000 and became a United States citizen in 2005. And obviously, you know, coming to Los Angeles, I followed through with my acting career. And um, I've been working in South Africa as an actor for five or six years before that as well. And uh, yeah, you know, I was lucky enough to get a show like Stargate, which really boosted me and boosted my name here. Casting director. What? What led to being on Stargate and what were your favorite memories from being on the set as a reoccurring figure? Mm -hmm. um, it was actually, you know, I met, a, I met Michael Greenberg, a, a good friend of mine from South Africa, actually married Michael Greenberg. She used to be a dancer oh. as well. And uh, my wife and I both know her. And I met Mike through her. And I knew Mike was a, was a producer of a show and he'd had shows like MacGyver and all that kind of thing. But I was never the kind of guy to run up to producers and go, hey, I'm an actor, you yeah. know, work heavy for me. Uh, I just don't do that. And that's the last thing you want to do to guys like Mike Greenberg. He's been through yeah. it all. He's done so much. He has so many people approaching him. And, you know, as a producer, that's what people do. They send you scripts. They talk to you. Hey, I've got a great yeah. story. And it, there's really nothing you can do. But so I just kept cool with him. And we actually became very good friends. We were walking along the beach here in Venice one day together um, with him and his son. And he just out of the blue mentioned to me, he's like, he knew all about me. He knew I was an actor and all of that. And he just said, Cliff, I'd like, I think you'd do well in our show. You know, I'd love you to be on our show. Have you watched it? I said, yeah, you know, I've watched one or two episodes. And of course, Rick, uh, Richard Dean Anderson, you know, MacGyver. I grew up watching MacGyver. And uh, so they pulled me into casting for just for a reading for no actual character. Ball hadn't been created. And uh, after that, it was probably about a month or two months later, I received a uh, script in the mail and uh, Baal had been created for me and uh, I went up to Vancouver and started filming. So it was pretty amazing uh, to know that they created the character of Baal with me in mind, the, the person I am and the way I sound and the way I look and all that kind of thing. So 
It was, it was amazing. It was amazing. It, it was a lucky break, uh, but I was ready for that luck. You know, I'd, I'd done enough training in my life to get going and, you know, do a de decent television show. And as I said, it was great. I got my name out to cast and directors here and uh, basically kick-started my career for me in the United States. Yes. Well, I was fond of your character because I thought he added a, a humor to the, um, the ghouls as in general that is not often found in that line of creatures. So. Yeah, yeah, I decided the first, the first episode I was on when we had, I think it was called Summit, and we had all the, the new ghouls all having yes. a big meeting. And I could, I've never wanted to play a three, a, a, like a two-dimensional bad guy. And <laughs> I always think, for me, as an actor, if you want to play a really bad guy, you have to play him as a good guy. You let yeah. the dialogue do the talking. You, if you start acting bad, it really comes across as comical and it's not believable and it's not three dimensional. So, you know, I just really brought a lot of myself into the character. He, he's got my sense of humor, of course. And you know, the one that episode Osiris walked in, all the fans will know about this. And I looked at her and I decided, okay, this is my chance. <laughs> this is where I can make Baal stand out from all the other goals. I slouched down in my chair, I crossed my legs, and I looked at her up and down as a woman. She was a beautiful, tall woman, you know, and I just looked at her up and down. And that was, that was the instant Baal's, the, the character of Baal was, uh, was created. He yeah. all of a sudden, he just was different to everybody else. But I did it completely naturally on the spur of the moment. But obviously it was sitting in my head subconsciously that I needed to make this guy something different, something uh, not just a bad guy. And it, luckily it worked. You know, some, you take chances as an actor, that worked. So it was great. Yes. I also like the episode, I don't remember the name, but when um, Ball decided to duplicate himself multiple times and there's a scene with all of your characters together in like a big condo and yeah. that was so comical. I mean, in a good way, but yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, it was such fun that, I mean, I, I watched on set after we'd filmed it, they would overlay the, uh, the, um, the digital versions for me just so I could kind of get an idea of what it looked like. Yeah. And yeah, we were all laughing. It was insane. I mean, the one guy's pouring a drink and the other one's reading yes. the paper. And it was very, very so funny. Character. I mean, yes. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it was a whole new learning experience for me doing, working on with so much green screen going on and having to change each one of my clones slightly differently, make them walk slightly differently or so they're not all exactly the same. That was yes. a good learning experience for me. Yes. And then also you were on Project Eden. What was that project like? Project Eden was great. I mean, we had great uh, producers and directors on that show. It was a fantastic, I, I, I'd say it's an Australian production because it was mostly the production, all the people were from Australia, but it really was a, it was an American Australian collaboration project. Um, you know, Eric, myself on the show, um, Mike Depod. So we went over there to shoot it and <clears throat> they did really well. They were hoping to bring our project even to depending on finances and all that kind of stuff. Hopefully one day down the road, it can happen. I don't think at the moment it's going to, uh, but yeah, that was an offer. You know, they got hold of me. They knew me from Stargate um, and they just wanted me in the show. So as an actor, always to get an offer role like that is uh, amazing where you don't actually have to go in and audition because they know what yeah. you can do. So that was great. And I got the opportunity to, to travel there and, you know, shoot, which was really amazing with some great people, great people on and off set. We had great parties, great time. And as you know, the Australians are very similar to South Africans. We, uh, we like to party. <laughs> yes. And then also, can you tell us a little bit about your um, current and upcoming work? Mm. So what I'm working on at the moment, I, last year, I shot the first season of my own show, which is called Into the Unknown. I'm an executive producer on that as well. We filmed one season last year, which was six episodes, which aired only in Europe. Uh, and it's called in Europe, it's called Uncharted Mysteries. And it airs on the History Channel over there. We're waiting still, for whatever reasons, it was held up in the United States. It's supposedly airing towards the end of the year here in the United States. I'm not really allowed to mention where yet, because things yeah. might still change but we can expect to probably see it around about November time in the United States. 
In the USA, it's called Into the Unknown, and in Europe, it's called Uncharted Mysteries. So Uncharted Mysteries, some clips and trailers of the, uh, the show are on YouTube. If you just uh, yeah. if they, you know, search Cliff Simon, Uncharted Mysteries, there's a couple of trailers. People can see what the show's about. It's an investigative adventure paranormal show. I go out and investigate these paranormal beings or things. Um, I've had questions already, people asking me like, are we gonna do Nessie and Loch Ness Monster and all of that, but that's not the kind of thing we're going for. We're, you know, those are more myths and legends. We're, we're looking at paranormal activity, things that people have actually seen and witnessed and are things we just can't explain. Um, so we, we have looked into certain things like Sasquatch only because we believe there's, there's a certain tie between Sasquatch and aliens. There's a, so there's a paranormal link there because Sasquatch as well is more just a, a myth and a legend. Yes, there's a lot of people say they've seen Sasquatch and Yeti, um, of course, yet to be really proven with bones and things like that. But uh, mine are more weird creatures, strange creatures down in Louisiana we have weird swamp things going down there and kind of ghostly um you can kind of call it ghostly but we're not ghost hunting either at all yeah it's a great show and we're not just concentrating it's more it's also about the adventure of it it's where i am how i get there how i find these these monsters we can call them or the, this paranormal activity it's not just i'm not all of a sudden just dropped in this place where things are happening. I have to get to these extremely remote areas and I have a very small camera crew with me. There's four of us and we climb mountains, we go across rivers, we climb 50 foot trees, whatever it takes to get to these. So there's the adventure aspect, which I think is very appealing to me anyway. I love that. Yeah. That's, me. That's just who I am. Yes, and will that be on your social media when it is released? And that oh, yeah. yeah, as soon as... Um, yeah, as soon as it's airing in the USA and Canada and all of that, uh, there'll be a lot of publicity about it. Also through the network that's going to be airing it. And all of that will be known. If people just follow me on Twitter and Facebook, uh, I keep up to date with a lot of that stuff. Yeah. Yes, and we'll add the links below the video once the recording's up so that they okay. can connect there to watch that as well. Right. Fantastic. Yeah. Great. And thank you so much for doing this interview, Cliff. And I'm looking forward to the live chat with you and Dean later today. So yeah, thank wonderful. You. Thank, thank you, man. And I hope uh, I've been trying to drive a lot of people towards the this afternoon's panel for Dean and myself. And I look forward to seeing Dean again. And yeah, we'll have a yeah. great live chat. And uh, thanks again for doing this. This is a, an amazing thing for all the fans and for us. You know, keeps away the boredom a bit. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.